welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new video for you and I'm going to be doing a story time. This is about the time that I went out with a total fuckboy. This has to be the worst date that I have ever been on. Like the worst of the worst of the worst. So before I start the story, I just have to say follow my social media. If you enjoy the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more story time. Okay, so the story starts at Frosh Week. It was my second year of college and Basically, there was like this paint party event that was going on. So my friend and I went because we both went to the same college and we get there pretty late, but whatever. We get on the party bus and we head to the party. We're just dancing, having a good time. Actually, no, not really. It was pretty fucking boring. So we're just like dancing and some guy comes up behind me and starts dancing on me. And like, I don't like dancing with guys when I go out. I don't know why. I just feel like it's not fun for me. Like maybe for the guy it's fun, but like for me, I'd rather just dance with my girl. I'm dancing, whatever, whatever. And then he comes up behind me. I don't really notice for a while. And then I finally turn around and I'm like, hi. Either I didn't notice or I didn't care. I don't really remember, to be honest. And he's just like, wow, you're beautiful. I'm just like, thank you. And then he's just like, nah, nah, man. Like, you're beautiful. Like, you're so beautiful. I'm like, okay, thanks. And I'm just trying to have a good time. Like, I don't really care what he has to say. Like, guys just say that, right? So I was just like, whatever. No, like, what's your background? Like, I've never seen someone with such a perfect face like yours. So then I tell him my background. And then he's just like, yo 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 and you're mixed oh man ha <laughs> thanks thanks okay let's move on now so he just keeps complimenting me and sweet talking me and i'm just like oh my god yo man like you don't even know like i love black girls man like yo like i love black girls i'm just kind of getting a little bit awkward and then he's just like all my friends are black i only chill with like mostly black people i've dated black girls before like you don't even know like i love the black culture and like yo they, i'm one of them like they, they accept me like and I'm just like kind of getting a little bit awkward. I just don't really care at this point because I'm a little bit, you know, <laughs> drunk. Okay, like I just, I was just being nice, like, oh, no way, haha, <laughs> like, because I was just being super friendly because that's just how I am. My friend's talking to the other guy, and eventually the paint party ends, so then we have to leave and get onto the party bus. So we end up leaving with them to get to the party bus. So leaving the event was just like a big lineup to get to this freaking party bus, and there were only like five shuttle buses, and they just had to keep loading them on, loading them on. So we just lined out all outside the venue, right? So as we're in line with them, we just get to talking, obviously. My friend's talking up the other guy, who is, by the way, way cuter. Um, I'm talking to this one, and he's not bad. Like, he has nice green eyes, like, nice hair. It's just a little bit too long for my liking. He wasn't my type, but he was decent. We're just talking, and he's telling me about how he lives on his own, and telling me about his life, and how him and his friend, like, had a lot of fun that night. And how he doesn't go to college, but, like, he does construction and mechanics, and his friend goes to the same college as my friend and I, and that's how they ended up at Frosh Week. And we just started talking. It was maybe like an hour in this line, 40 minutes to an hour. And we leave and he asks for my number. And I just felt so bad saying no. I don't know why. I never feel bad saying no. So anyways, he gets my number. And the next day he texts me, right? <sighs> he texts me, good morning, beautiful. Good morning, beautiful. Really? Really? <laughs> I'm just like, hey, how was your night? Or something like that. Fuck, I... I have it all on my iPhone 4S. I should like insert screenshots if I find it. If I don't, then whatever. And he's just like, it was good. Did you have a good time, sweetheart? Number one fucking pet peeve when talking to guys is when I don't know them and they call me sweetheart, babe, hun. So don't do that. You do not know me. Do you even know my name? Like, do you know my name? And then we just talked for like the week or so through text. He tried to make plans to hang out. So I wasn't really having it. I don't know why I was replying, but um, my friend eventually convinced me, like, Ashley, you have nothing to lose. If anything, you just get more dating experience, you know what I mean? You know what you don't like. So then I'm just like, I really don't want to. Like, you guys don't understand. Like, I really didn't want to. Even the day up, I did not want to go. I didn't even try. I wore, like, a baggy sweater and, like, a little bit of mascara and a leather jacket and just, like, jeans. Like, I didn't even look that great. I think I have a picture on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um... It was from the day of, it was right before I left. He finally convinced me to go, so I'm like, fine, I'll just go. So I go on this stupid ass date. He texts me, he's like, outside. So I'm like, alright. So I get in the car, and first thing I shall say is that his car is fucking filthy. Like, filthy! The whole back seat is filled with boxes, and filled with dirty clothes, and filled with, like, just nonsense. Like, just trash, and, like, McDonald's bags, and empty coffee cups, and just, like, wires. I don't know what the hell he's been doing in his car, if he's been living in it, but that shit was dirty. You know, like, the stick shift thing, and how it says, like, park, drive, reverse, 
neutral, all that stuff. Inside, like the groove of where that is, it was filled with crumbs and like stickiness. Like you couldn't even see the letters. Like it was filled. And like there was like sticky little splotches all over the dashboard. Oh my God, it was so dirty. And like the seat had a stain on it and it just smelled musty. So I get in the car and I'm just like trying not to touch anything. I'm like, hi. And he's like, hey. I'm like trying to be all smooth. Oh, how was your sleep? Oh, blah, blah, blah. And then he's just like, yeah, I cleaned my car for you. <laughs> Wait, what? You cleaned your car for me? This is your car fucking clean? So I literally sat there like, are you, is this a joke? Like, I was just sitting there like, wait, wait what? Where? Which car? This car? Because this car's not clean. I don't know if you can tell, but like, you should have seen it before. And I'm just thinking in my head like, bitch, I did not want to see it before. Like, this is already horrible enough. If this is not the biggest turn off, I don't know what is. But like, the fact that this is your car clean no i can't imagine what your freaking room looks like so then he starts talking about himself so he's talking about how he lives underneath a 3.3 million dollar home him and his friend sorry him and his homie rent a basement apartment and they pay 1200 per month and they have a jacuzzi and if i want to come over and check out the jacuzzi i can and i'm just like oh my god so then he's like so where do you want to go i'm like i don't know i guess we go for like lunch or dessert or coffee or something like that so he chooses the cheapest one coffee I'm here saying like, oh yeah, there's like a Starbucks like up the street, like literally two minutes away. And he's like, oh, is there a Tim Hortons around? And if you're watching and you're not from Canada and you don't know what Tim Hortons is, Tim Hortons is the equivalent to like Dunkin Donuts and it's really cheap. Coffee's like a dollar there. And I'm just like, okay, you don't need to spend your life savings on me, but really, you're gonna take me to Tim Hortons? So I'm just like, yeah, there's a Tim Hortons right across the Starbucks. And he's just like, all right, cool, we'll go to Tim Hortons then. I'm like, okay. We go inside the lineup and like, he first of all just like walked straight through the door like he didn't even hesitate to open the door for me he didn't even do that like one arm thing where like he goes through first and kind of opens it for me no like he did not give a shit he just walked through the door so that was already like ill i'm sorry but like ill no like i was raised to not tolerate certain things for men and mm -hmm, sorry i have high standards so we get in line and we're like about to order and he's like yo do you want anything so i'm just like oh well yeah i just i Okay, sure. He ordered an extra large fucking coffee. And okay, there's some more in sizes. There's like small, medium, large, extra large. It's like from here to the bottom of this mug. It's fucking huge. Like it's huge, right? So, okay, who am I to judge? If you want to get extra large coffee, get extra large coffee. It was just kind of weird to me. Like you can get that after like we finish up, but whatever. That's not bad. Gets an extra large coffee. Gets a motherfucking muffin gets a donut gets a oreo something some like oreo donut that they have so we got two donuts a muffin an extra large thing and like seven timbits and then he's like yeah so you do you want anything so we get like a small little frozen raspberry lemonade we order and he pays he's like do you want to just chill in the car so we do and we sit in the car and we just start talking in the tim hortons parking lot so we're sitting in the parking lot and he just starts talking about himself right starts talking about how all his homies are black and he's like i can't believe that i'm on a date with such a girl like you like you don't understand like i love black girls all my homies are black and like yo like the perfect black girl sitting right in front of me yo like honestly like no man i love your culture like i listen to Kali buds i listen to vibes cartel and he starts talking about how much he loves reggae and hip-hop and like then he's like yo you want me to play you something <laughs> I'm like what and i'm just sitting there like honestly i don't really listen to them like i don't really listen to reggae um, it's not that I'm opposed to it. I think it's very catchy. I love when it comes out of the club I just don't really go out of my way to download it, right? Which maybe I should because part of my culture, but like Anyway, so he starts playing reggae music and he starts playing some like song like some dirty lyrics song And he's like, you know this song? So I'm just like, no, I don't know this song So we just sit there for a bit longer listening to his favorite reggae songs And he starts telling me about how his homies introduced him all these sick ass reggae tracks and how much he loves it and blah 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 so i'm just sitting there awkwardly like he's like you'll listen to this part and the lyrics are like so dirty and i'm just there like he starts playing that and i get really awkward and he's like honestly yo like you're so perfect yo you're so perfect and he starts telling me about how like he hangs out with black people again and i'm just like yo like stop telling me how much you love black people i understand oh it was just so annoying it reminded me of those memes where like the guy sitting in the pool with like some black girl and then he's like oh i'll just insert the memes here okay because these memes kill me and every time i see them i think about colin and i'm just, oh shit whatever yeah colin if you're watching this i'm talking about you so he just kept doing that he kept talking about that over and over again throughout the entire date in the parking lot 
So then he starts talking about his life. And mind you, I have not gotten a word out, okay? All I've done is like, <laughs> no, yeah, cool. Like, I haven't said anything because he doesn't give a shit about what I have to say. He's literally so focused on himself. So then he starts talking about his job, about mechanics and construction, whatever. Starts talking about the time he almost died. Talking about how he was, like, fixing some wires and the lighting fixture in the ceiling and, like, how his hands got stuck and there was an electrical shock and, like, he couldn't let go because his body was, like, paralyzed for like the moment he was like literally reenacting the moments like so intensely so he's showing me like exactly what he was doing started showing me like how his arms were stuck and then his veins start like popping out and his muscles start popping out and he's just like his whole face is like sweating and he just looks crazy and i was just like oh my god what the fuck is going on and he's like the funny thing is yo after i died i told my girlfriend the story she broke up with me and then my homie almost died that day too at work and then his girlfriend broke up with him so we were both just like depressed and then this got him started on the topic of his ex-girlfriend. Let me tell you something. If you're on a date with a girl, and you can't think about what to talk about, and you want to talk about something that, you know, she's going to love hearing about, talk about your ex-girlfriend. She's going to love it. So at this point, I'm just, like, here for the entertainment. However, I did tell him that I had a baby shower at, like, 4 o'clock, so I had to leave by, like, 2.30, okay? Because it was pretty early. I didn't have a baby shower, but I knew I wanted an easy out. So that's on the topic of how she cheated on him and they were together for two years and after she cheated on him she broke up with him the day that he almost died so he goes on to tell me about how special their bond was and how amazing their relationship was and how he had no idea he treated her like gold and blah 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 blah, blah. and all of a sudden she fi he finds out that she's cheating on him and she had been cheating on him and then when he found out she broke up with him then huh, it gets better then he starts fucking tearing up Okay, he's telling the story. He can't even look me in my eyes because the guy is tearing up. His eyes are full on creating a pool of water. Okay, like it was like legit. Like he wasn't just like, you know, let me blink twice and it's gone. No, this guy, if he blinked, he there, there would have been teardrops falling down his face. So I'm just like, literally, I was not saying anything. I was just sipping my frozen lemonade. Oh, and I forgot to mention the first five, ten minutes of us sitting in the car it was just him scarfing down his food. He finished that extra large coffee in a span of five minutes, okay? And he was spilling it on himself. Oh my god, I totally forgot to mention this. And he was eating the donuts and he has like Oreo bits around the corners of his mouth. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he has shit in his teeth and he's talking with his mouth full and he was just literally scarfing down those Timbits and those donuts and those muffins. He finished everything in a span of 10 minutes and he's finished his coffee within five minutes. He literally just... And he's just like... Oh my bad. After he spills it on himself, like, it was really bad. So back to the ex-girlfriend. He goes on to continue crying about his ex-girlfriend. Like, so then he goes on to basically explain why he goes out with girls. So he starts talking about some girl he met on Tinder. And he's like, yeah, like, I was going out with her. She lived in Scarborough. And like, yo, like, I was driving out of my way to go see this girl. And like, yo, I wasn't getting any pussy. And I really hate that word. I don't know why. I just feel like it's so vulgar. And he goes on to say how he wasn't getting any. And then I'm just like, okay, like, whatever. Like, like why are you telling me this so he's like yeah yo like i was going out of my way i was driving all the way down to scarves you know that's like a 25 minute drive i wasn't getting no gas money i wasn't getting no nothing i wasn't getting any head why are you telling me this like go tell your boys this go tell your homies this like why me so he's like and like yo like if i'm driving out of my way i'm gonna go scoop you up you know i'm not getting anything returned it's like why am i doing this so I'm here thinking like, okay, so is that why you came to scoop me up? Because you think you're going to get something in return? Because that's just not going to happen. Like, it's not going to happen. And I didn't say this, but I'm just like, I literally said nothing this entire time. I was just sipping my frozen lemonade and looking straight ahead and making facial expressions. Like, this guy is crazy. And like, yo, it wasn't fair because like he would bring her out for coffee and he'd pay for her and like, she, he wasn't getting shit and he'd bring her out for lunch and he wouldn't get anything and go pick her up or bring, it to, bring her to his house. They wouldn't even go in the jacuzzi or nothing. And he's just complaining about this for maybe 15 minutes and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm like, I don't care. So I'm like, so you're basically saying that if you're hanging out with a girl, you have to get something in return. He's like, well, yeah, I mean, like, I chilled with you one, two times. Like, yeah, like, I'm not going to go pick you up. I'm not going to go take you out for nothing. Like, I'm getting something in return. And I'm just like, mm, interesting. Okay. I kept silent after that. 
And then he just keeps ranting about that and how much he hates paying for girls and how much he thinks it's unfair and how he thinks that they shouldn't even go halves. Like, the girls should just pay for the guy sometimes. And, like, he was just going on and on and on. He starts telling me about his life some more and about how, like, he's broke and how he never went to school. He's just doing construction and mechanics. He's like, yo, at one point I was so broke, all I could afford was peanut butter, jelly, and bread. And I would just eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches every day of my life five times a day and that's it i would just drink water that's all i would do and i'm like so why don't you live at home he's like because yo fuck my parents man fuck my parents yo, i'd rather live on my own i can work for i can work hard for myself i do my own shit blah 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 i'm like yeah you're working so hard that you can only eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches like i'm sorry come on i understand if like he really really had the struggle honestly he had a car and you don't need a car if you're really really struggling you do not need a car especially if you live in toronto and he didn't go to school, so he's not saving up for school. And he chose to rent a basement apartment under a $3.3 million home with a jacuzzi in it. Like, come on. You don't have your priorities straight. Like, if you're spending your money on, like, this shit, and then you're not having a proper life, then this is your own fault. Date continued. And he's just, like, ranting about stuff and just keeps talking about himself. And then he's like, yo, I feel like I've been talking this whole time. Like, tell me about yourself. Like, t what are you up to? You go to, you go to college, huh? You go to college, huh? <laughs> just like yeah you know i go to college what are you taking i'm taking business management oh cool cool yo my homie took business management yo like he was always going through this stuff and then i realized i don't want to go to school fuck school so that's how i started my construction blah 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 and then he just continues on talking about himself that that was it that he learned maybe he learned maybe two things about me that day oh my god look at the time like shit i have to get to this baby shower so he's like oh man like yo that's too bad so I'm like, yeah, okay, so I need to go home now. And so we drive the two minutes back to my house. On the way back to my house, when we're getting, like, into my neighborhood, he puts his hand on my leg, like, on my thigh, and he just leaves it there. So I move my leg, like, uh, okay. <laughs> and then he moves it back on. I'm, like, moving my leg, like, chill. Like, I didn't say that, but I moved my leg. Like, I quickly moved it so he knows, like, no, don't do that again. So then he didn't put his hand back on it. And so we drive the two minutes back to my house and he parks so far from my house he parks like three houses down and i'm like oh it's that one right there he's like yeah you good I'm like, okay and then he stops like i said the three houses down and then i'm like all right so i'm gonna go now <laughs> like i just got really awkward and he's like all right it was good hanging out with you and i just didn't say anything and then i'm opening the door and he's like mind you this is still with oreo bits on his fucking mouth what? No goodbye kiss? Nope! Close the door and I go back into my house. The next day, he texts me, Good morning, beautiful. I had a really good day with you yesterday. I hope you enjoyed yourself too. I didn't answer. Next day, hi. Didn't answer. Next day, did you go see J. Cole? Because at Frosh, I was telling him I was going to see J. Cole, right? And he was saying he wants to come with me. And I'm just like, no, no, no. So he's like, did you go see J. Cole? Did you enjoy yourself? I didn't answer. The next day, he's like, hey, beautiful. So I'm like, hey, honestly, I'm not trying to be rude, but after we hung out, I realized we don't really have much in common, and I just don't see myself really needing to get to know you any further. Uh, thanks again for the Tim Hortons, and enjoy yourself, or like enjoy your life, something like that. I was just being very nice. He's like, yeah, to be honest, I felt the same way. I'm glad you said it first, though. I'm just like, what? Are you kidding me? You did not feel the same way, okay? It, it, oh, it's just like, I hate guys that have so much pride like that. Because first of all, the guy tried to kiss me. Then he texted me like five times in a row in the span of like a week with no answer. Sometimes like twice a day. And I'm just like, if you don't want to talk to me, you wouldn't have been talking to me. Like, you wouldn't have been messaging me like that. So he's just like, yeah, to be honest, I felt the same way. I'm like, okay, no worries. And he's like, yeah, I'm glad you were honest though. I really don't like when girls lie to me and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then he's like, anyways, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna make my money. I'm gonna get on my shit. I'm like, yeah, 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 okay. And he keeps talking. I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, that's good to know, Colin. And then he finally stopped answering and I haven't heard from Colin since. So that was my story of my worst dating experience ever. I don't know why I got into the car with him alone. I don't know why I went out with someone I didn't want to go out with. I don't know why I stayed for as long as I did. And I don't know why I didn't say more and put him in his place. I was just too shocked by what he was saying. And I was just like, you know? But yeah, I hope this never happens to me again. And if it does, hey, at least it's a good story time. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, like it. If you want more story times, let me know down below because I don't know, am I a good storyteller? I hope so. If I'm not, then sorry. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more videos, and stay cute, my loves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I
I'm trying to think about 